master plan is it's basically uh, it doesn't have an age yeah it's not a building that after 50 years we're going to demolish it or something the master plan is just the base of everything else so master planning needs to be connected to the city needs to give added value and uh, more than anything needs to be able to adapt with the changes of the social or economic structure of, of the place where master planning. Master planning addresses specific needs of, of uh, uh, geographically and, and city-wise. Um, so when we're saying flexible, we're talking about the master plan that can actually accept uh, different functions uh, through its lifespan. Uh, it's not only car related or it's not only residential related or it's not only uh, you know financial district related it has to be we have to get examples from successful cities that have already organically developed and that are relevant to what we want to create at that specific point one of the challenges that's facing the market at the moment is the uh, when master plans were designed they were designed in one economic climate now that we're seeing them come to fruition we're in a slightly different climate and that's giving a challenge in terms of the what is required to be built what's already built to service that and i think the flexibility of being able to change the uses or locations of those uses is something that uh, is proving, proving a bit of a challenge for us at the moment I'm no expert in, uh, in terms of connecting, I'm no real expert in terms of how the historical development, I, I have a view in terms of a historical perspective of, of listening to others talk about it. I think connectivity is, is, is vital. I mean, I'll give you an example. In London, you can get on the Metro and you can get on uh, Marble Arch and you can get off Tottenham Court Road um, and it's a very quick journey. But there's, a, there's a, an above ground route that you can walk. Uh, it takes you a bit longer, but you go through a journey that enriches your life. Um, and so that, that level of connectivity between one part of London to another part of London is very much facilitated in terms of how people interact on a day-to-day -day basis, how they engage with each other, how they engage with the city, how they engage within the components that may type a street or a neighborhood. And I think one of those things uh, that we we often forget about here is that we uh, we work in development zones, and the 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 edges are so critical. Um, you know, we take for granted that we walk across a boundary. It's it's not a physically marked boundary, but there's boundaries everywhere in the world that we exist in, and the reason why we forget about them is because they're integrated here. They're very delineated you, uh, and they're often marked by roads uh, or bridges or um, whatever it may be, backs of buildings that then don't allow you to engage with those buildings. I think there's a, uh, a major need to connect the city, um, cities such as Dubai. Um, Dubai is a, is a great city, it's a big city, but I think there's a problem of fragmentation. Um, we see all these different districts or mini cities and they're all connected by highways um, which is kind of like a, a country rather than a city um, so there is a there is a real need I think for Dubai to um, rather than keep building these fragmented master plans and just focus on connecting what we have already and build on that. Um, in a way, it's like optimizing the city and uh, making it future-proof uh, rather than isolating the different clusters. I think there's a good example that Dubai can take lessons from, which is the example of how they did it in, in a similar city where Hong Kong. Um, in Central, for example, they have, uh, it's a very dense uh, district, but what they did there, um, 
all the ground floor had to be activated and that was enforced by the, the DCR and the, the, the authorities and uh, all developers had to try and uh, enable all these structures to connect together and therefore if you activate the ground floor and also activate the first floor as a public space then you would have you would connect all these different structures together and it would provide a strong link to cross from one part of the of a, of the side of the road to the other or one part of the district to the other and it would be shaded it would be uh, air conditioned and it would uh, encourage people to walk which is missing here in dubai we all drive and it's all good, it's comfortable, but I think uh, we're missing that um, human touch. All of our design on master planning, whether it's master planning or architecture, should always have in, in mind the balance between um, the developer, who is the one who's actually investing and needs to get a return, uh, the user, who's the one who's going to use it and needs to feel comfortable and, and you know evolve his life in this space that he's going to occupy, and the city. So this equilibrium is what we as architects need to achieve. The equilibrium and the win-win-win situation between the three elements that construct the city. The developer, the user, and the city itself. That's where the inter-master uh, inter planning connection needs to happen. That's where the user-friendly spaces need to happen, which is always human scale and, and relevant uh, to the lifestyle that everybody, every one of us needs to have. And this is where this gives the added value for the developer to make his profit, which is absolutely uh, a right thing to do. issues around um, stakeholder engagement uh, are really critical. I think that, that ranges from um, official entities to client bodies to the end user. And I think what's important is to, uh, we rarely uh, have the opportunity to ask why do you want to develop this master plan in this way. Um, we, we, we're commissioned and we deliver and we finish our job and we move on to the next project. I think it's important for us as professionals to actually ask why the product is being pushed in a particular direction. So we inform ourselves of uh, how we can best deliver that product, but also the end users who will use that product. What are they being asked? And what information uh, is being garnered from them? If we can interact with them, we can actually inform ourselves better in terms of our own design solutions and have a better understanding of the dem demographic that's going to potentially use it, but also offer alternative solutions that maybe haven't been considered. So I think, you know, consultation uh, in inverted commas is a very important aspect uh, at all levels of the process, but per particularly with our communities, because I think, you know, we want to create environments and places where people feel engaged, where there are employment opportunities, where we don't have dormitory cities, where we have uh, all, all day use, all night use, uh, that gives us security uh, and that gives us visibility. And that creates a level of harmony that uh, is, is more in, uh, I guess, conducive to creating places where communities flourish. Engaging with end users uh, in other countries is, for example, the UK where, where I've professionally from, projects of a large scale happen at a much slower pace. So the opportunity to actually engage with users is there's more time to do that. Uh, there's also a great incentive to do that. People are required to do that. I think when um, you have a number of master plans, multiple master plans, 8, 10, 12 happening at the same time, um, it becomes a bit more challenging to, to get that information and not necessarily knowing who the end users are is also a challenge that we, we face. For this equilibrium to happen, it's absolutely necessary that the developer, the city, and the user are actually in communication. We need to see and we need to plan out as experts the future of this city. Um, 
every city has a vision, every city has a, a general master plan. This shouldn't be left only in the hands of, of people who are looking at feasibility studies or how the economy looks at that point. We need to have a much, much more uh, like long distance master plan and strategy. And this will come only if these three bodies are actually communicating with each other. People that are protecting the individual's uh, 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 lifestyle, um, uh, the city, and of course the government, and the professionals ourselves. We need to be able to come together and express our ideas. Um, we as experts on the cities and, and, and bring not only on the private table between the architect and the developer, you know, okay, this has happened in that city, this has happened, maybe it's worked, but we need to actually activate a, a master planning strategy together as a group of experts.